crazy. I was just about to start turning the torch on and, and see if there's uh, any any gases in this tank that we're trying to evacuate and all of a sudden started pounding and I was like, uh-oh, it was thunder outside. Holy moly, that'll scare you a little bit. All right, let's see what happens. Let's just make sure there's no gas in here. Not gasoline, but actually flammable gases. Seems like a lot of people use silver uh, and other metals for brazing. I didn't know what that was. Here's it has to do with the temperature at which the material you're using to add melts. In this case, we're using solder that's melting at about 430 degrees. Anything under 480 is considered soldering. Anything over 480 is uh, considered a brazing. I just sanded this and it kind of filled in the hole, which all those impurities are going to come out when I solder. There we go. By the way, it's just the kit that I picked up from Home Depot, Oatly brand. OD. Part 506912. It comes with this flux and it comes with this solder. It also comes with this uh, little brush so you can put the flux on. Never done this before, so let's get some heat and some flux on there and see what happens. I guess this soldering process is a little like sex. You know, the first time you do it, you're no good at it, so don't even worry about it. Um, the only risk I have here is that I might have burnt the tank a little bit. Yeah, you can definitely see the dark spot. That's probably not ideal. Probably should have quit when I was ahead. I mean, on, honestly, the solder is over that spot, so that's good. Huh, not too bad. Well, poop, I may have actually just done a decent deal on this, you know? The spot is a little bit black around it, but not too bad. I suppose while we're at it, we ought to also turn this thing over and double check the uh, to see if there's been any flash rust in here. Let's see what we got in here. Not too bad. Ah, interesting. You can definitely see that's the heat mark. Oh, you can even see where the hole was that I filled. Cool. Yeah, baby, look at that. That's the hole I just filled. Sweet. You can see where the outline of the white is where the solder is sitting and I barely covered the hole because it's all to the right, but I did cover it. A little bit of rust starting there. We'll let it cool down a minute and uh, we'll put the acid solution back in and just see if it uh, see if it leaks. All right, let's take a look. Well, the new one is solid right there. Not leaking. Yeah, that one's solid. I think we're golden. All right. All right, to the naked eye, it looks like this tank may be good. Last step, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to empty this tank out into a five gallon bucket, which I will neutralize later. The key to this is doing this quickly before the tank has an opportunity to rust. I'm going to put some baking soda and water in it, and I'm going to actually neutralize whatever may be left inside of it. And then I'm actually going to put some of our acetone in it. And uh, we'll we'll put that in here probably, now this is what, 32 ounces here? Quart. Yeah, so we'll put about eight ounces in the tank, slosh it all around, and pour it out the best we can. And then, because it's tough to get some of the liquid out of this tank because of because the filler neck actually protrudes about you know a half of an inch below the surface of the tank inside here, so the liquid doesn't want to just fall out when it's upside down. But we'll get all of that out of there the best we can, and then blow air through it after the acetone, which is most likely to be the easiest way in which to create flash rust. But we need to get some air through it. That was where we had the event the other night at Chips where we did that. And uh, we actually had a fireball come out of this. I wish I could have caught that on video, but uh, it's pretty cool. The acetone does dilute the tank liner. It does make it soft. So I'll try to blow some air through it, get it dry, and then the heat, you know, when we put a torch to that, it'll heat it up. It'll evacuate that acetone pretty good. We just have to be really careful to make sure that it is almost all out of there. We've blown air through there. We dried it out almost as much as we possibly can. The acetone does evaporate really quickly, but we would like to have it all out of there because it does break down the tank liner, the cream tank liner. So last up, let's see how it goes. All right, so what's interesting is this time when we poured the muriatic acid out, it was actually quite orange. 
Check out this color. So there must have been some more rust or something in there. We've now actually neutralized the muriatic acid that was in the tank, uh, rinsed it all out twice. Let's see what the inside of the tank looks like. Interesting, yeah. It's almost like that's starting to spot rust already. Check that out. So I'm gonna hit this with acetone, which is gonna cause that to be a little bit even more possibly rusty quickly. So I'm gonna do that and uh, get all the rest of the water out of there. All right, I'm gonna put eight ounces of acetone in this thing. That looks pretty good. Get our little plug, homemade plug back on there. Pour it slowly so we don't spill it. All right. All right, let's swirl this around. Put a little uh, Ziploc bag on the inside of that to protect the cap itself from the acetone. All right, let's slosh this around a little bit now. We can get all that acetone to eat up all the water. Make sure there's no leaks. Dry up anything that looks wet. So uh, we'll get the cap off here. I do notice it is breathing a little bit. Actually, this stuff is really difficult to actually pour out of this because of that filler neck. Hey! All right, let's take a quick look in the tank and see uh, how we did after the acetone. Not bad. Real good. Enough to line this sucker, that's for sure. All right, let's blow some air through there. Not too bad, actually. Make sure there's no more acetone fumes and see if there's any fireball. All right, we're golden. Sorry there's no fireball, but that's the safest way to do it. Now we're ready to line this tank. <coughs> so let's get our seal on the bottom and uh, fill it up and shake it all around. Still dripping which means it's still wet in there yeah wow actually that looks fantastic i may actually find i do have some left over here for pouring it out very good all right let's start the timer with the spout open and give this thing a little bit of time to uh dry and then we'll rotate it again All right, so we just uh, rotated for the second time. Let's see how we did here. Wow, actually pretty good. Looks a lot like that Camry tank. Holy moly, I'm pretty happy with our, our work. All right, good work. Let's set the timer for another eight minutes. We're letting it dry. We got the timer set, but it does look like it is all very well coated and it is pooling in the bottom, which is good. So, so far, the directions are good, yay. All right, so the other thing I thought I'd just explain is technically what you're supposed to do is put this tank, put this tank down on another side after the first eight to 10 minutes of drying, or after the second rotation, technically, probably to let the first side dry a little more. I didn't do that. Um, I think I'm gonna run an extra rotation here too, just to make sure it, I do get it to dry. I will let it settle on a different side but most of the sealing problems that we are gonna have are going to be in the bottom. Primarily, you're using this product for keeping it from rusting again, but I'm also hoping to help seal the tank. So I'm doing an extra round of this on the bottom of the tank. So we're eight minutes up again, so let's uh, get it rotating again. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, this is looking This is looking fantastic. Looking good? Yep. I will turn it on its side and see this time what that does. All right, we'll let this one sit on this side for a little bit and then we'll rotate her again. Mm. 